Welcome back, everyone, to the Greater Good Podcast. I'm really excited to be here again today. Got an exceptional guest on the show today, a person I know a little bit. I know more about his family, I think, than I do about this gentleman I'm going to introduce, but I'm really excited to have Steve Voss with us today, Mayor Steve Voss from Poway. Um, Let me just kind of remind everyone the whole purpose of this Greater Good show is to kind of reflect on people that not necessarily write a check to do good, but those people that actually put feet on the ground and impact our community in really meaningful ways. Uh, You know, there are plenty of people out there that are very uh, generous with their donations for, for instance, uh, our San Diego Harbor Police Foundation. Uh, But, you know, it's those individuals that are willing to step up and volunteer or donate their time and energy that really make the greatest impact on our community. So without further discussion, I want to introduce Mayor Steve Voss from Poway. Hi, Steve. Great to see you. Hey, Jeff. Good to be with you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You really, uh, uh, I was looking forward to this event for a lot of reasons. As you know, I, I know your wife, Corey, very well. She's, uh, she's been doing a lot of work for us at our San Diego Harbor Police Foundation uh, she's just an extraordinary videographer and photojournalist, uh, along with your daughter, Anna, who we now employ. So, you know, pretty much we've got half of your family on the payroll. <laughs> so, well, you better get Jake on there, too. I, I, I want to talk about him because uh, you've got some great stories. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and what you do? Oh, golly. Uh, where to start? Uh I've lived in the county for, uh, gosh, coming on uh, 45 years. Uh, have been mayor of the city of Poway uh, for the last six and a half years. Uh, I was on the city council for two years before that. Uh, a lot of folks, when I go around the county, uh, say, wait, are you the same Steve Voss that did all the music for the San Diego Padres back in 1984? And I say, yeah, I'm uh, I'm that guy. I've done a lot of music in my career, music for things like the Padres and the U.S. Navy Blue Angels uh, for commercials, uh, worked with recording artists like the Commodores and Kenny Rogers. And uh, I've, I've had a varied career. Let's let's put it that way. Well, that, that's what makes people really interesting. Uh, you know, we don't have enough time in this half hour show to even begin to list some of the things that probably you have done and certainly I've done. But I think that kind of lifestyle, that sort of uh, willingness to be adventuresome really adds character to to people and, and, and gives us a story. Because if you really think about life, I mean, what, what more do we have other than our stories and our family and the love that we have for those people that are important to us? So if you don't have stories to tell, you know, you're probably going to be not all that interesting. So <laughs> uh, what, why don't you tell us a story about, say, the most important uh, event in your life uh, from the musical side? Oh, boy. You know, I've, I've been uh, blessed in my music career. I'm, I'm certainly not the most talented guy in the world. Uh, matter of fact, I, I remember all too well the first time I auditioned to uh, play somewhere live, and the uh, booker asked me afterwards, he said, well, Steve, are you thinking about doing this as a hobby or a career? I said, well, I really want to do it as a career. And he said, well, you ought to think about it as a hobby. <laughs> then uh, a few years ago when I won my Grammy Award, I thought of him. I'd love to be able to track him down. But uh, certainly my musical career, winning a Grammy certainly was the highlight. Wow. I, I should say so. I mean, that's sort of the pinnacle of the music uh, industry. And uh, congratulations. Tell, tell us about the – did you write that song or did you sing it? T- tell us about that. Yeah, it uh, – I, when Anna and her brother Jacob were young, uh, I was frustrated with the music that was being put out for kids. And, uh, you know, you had Radio Disney at the time purporting to be for kids, but, you know, they're playing Britney Spears and stuff like that. And Britney's very talented, but not appropriate for kids. So I thought, I'm going to do some kids' music. Mm-hmm. And I put together a uh, kids' album, and it, uh, Got much more popular than I expected. I was signed to a big record company down in Nashville. And one thing led to another. And, you know, I wrote and produced and engineered uh, the album or CD 
uh, that won the Grammy Award. So uh, you just never know what's coming around the next corner. Wow. Well, that's a, a great story. Now, your your daughter Anna, she's she's now living in Nashville and is has a, quite a an explosive budding musical career as well. Yeah, she's is right? Anna is doing great. Uh, she signed to uh, Black River Entertainment in uh, Nashville. Uh, same folks that have uh, Kelsey Ballerini on their roster, and if you're a fan of country music, you know the name Kelsey Ballerini, so they know what they're doing. Anna's writing great songs. Uh, She's a pretty engaging uh, performer, uh, so I see great things. I, I think she may win more Grammys than I have, uh, but uh, time will tell. So let's talk about these awards, because your family <clears throat> is kind of chock-a-block, uh, as in full up with awards. I mean, you've been blessed with many awards in your life, and your wife, I think she has something like 19 Emmys and half a dozen or so Mike Awards and Anna's, you know, getting on the charts and your your son Jacob, who's a, a very very prolific filmmaker at a young age. Jacob is what 20, 21 years old. Uh, twenty two uh, this year, uh, or no, twenty two, twenty three. I don't know. He's young. He just graduated <laughs> college. Uh, Jacob is an incredible writer. Uh, filmmaker. He's going places. Uh, you know, awards are great. Not so much that you get the shiny piece of metal, but that it's it's affirmation of a sort from, from your peers in the industry that know what they're looking at and know what goes into it. So when you right. get that affirmation from them, uh, you're doing something right. So do you have like a special room for all the awards <laughs> for your family? Because I'm not we, sure I can count them all. Well, we we have a vault here. No, uh, we don't. They're kind of scattered all around. Some are paperweights, some are in closets, uh, gathering dust. Uh, as you mentioned, Corey's got an awful lot of Emmys. Uh, she's ahead of me by, I think, four or five, which really kind of ticks me off because we are competitive. Yeah, she told uh, me. But uh, she uh, she is a very talented storyteller, and uh, yeah, I'm delighted when I get to see the things that she does and. Uh, I think she's uh, bringing great value to uh, the uh, projects that you've got her working on as much as she pulls her hair out and sometimes says, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've kind of turned the corner, she may have told you. In fact, I heard you actually uh, in celebration of one of our uh, epiphanies uh, in this project on human trafficking, you 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 were so excited that you you took her out to dinner just kind of to celebrate, and I thought that was really a nice Nice gesture because uh, she and I did the happy dance uh, remotely, but uh, you were able to get her out and and let her celebrate that wonderful cause. So so just to kind of refresh our listeners' uh, knowledge here, the San Diego Harbor Police Foundation, one of our main focuses is on uh, human trafficking awareness, and Steve Voss's wife, Corey, is uh, running the, uh, the photo... Uh, the, the filming, the, the content and all that for our awareness training. So she's she's really a great contributor and she herself is part of the greater good family in my mind. She's a, she's a giver, she gives back. So I'm wearing this really bright blue shirt today and there's, there's a story behind it and Sarah, producer Sarah, executive producer Sarah, let me never demean her title. Um, you know, my wife is quite a prolific artist, and she she said, well, look at that background at IQ Podcasts, and you got to make sure you wear the right colors, otherwise you're just going to get washed out, and people won't be able to see what you really look like. And so I don't know what show it was, but one of my shows, I had this pretty bright red and black checkered shirt on, and, and Sarah thought it looked pretty cool. And so yesterday I said, I always ask my wife, when I'm coming to do this show, what what should I wear? And uh, because you know she's got the color sense, and uh, I said well, I've got this really nice black silk shirt that I've been kind of wanting to wear. And she goes, "Don't you dare put that shirt on!" And so she reaches under her desk and she says, "Here's your early Father's Day present." And she pulls out this blue shirt and she said, <laughs> "She said, this is what you're going to wear on this show because Steve Voss is probably going to dress better than you." So, <laughs> no, no, that that never happens. I I don't pay too much attention to 
to what I wear. And here I am in this gray fading into the background. So your wife will probably have words for me. So I do have a story about you and fashion. And um, I won't reveal my source, but um, it did come from someone within your family group, and it was confirmed by a couple of members. But I understand you had a particular fashion statement at your wedding. Did, did you yeah. want to tell us, tell us about that? It, it was pretty tame, really. I, I wore my cowboy boots, as I almost always do. Uh, you know, I couldn't get away with a hat back then. But, uh, yeah, I think 99% of the time you'll find me in cowboy boots, unless I'm sitting by the pool or, you know, muck in a stall or something. So do you ride now? <laughs> now, the horse that I had, uh, our beloved Ted, uh, we had to put him down a few years ago, and it was right about the time I became mayor. And as you well know, uh, if you're going to have a horse, uh, it takes a lot of time and a lot of commitment. And being mayor and still running my business uh, on top of that and doing a few other things, being on the Sandag Board of Directors, I just don't have the time. But I grew up on a cattle ranch, grew up riding horses, and it's in my blood. Yeah, no, I get it. I'm I'm really most comfortable when I'm wearing my boots and my hat. Um, and I've been blessed by um, a couple of my friends. One in particular, he, he has Parkinson's disease, and mm -hmm. he's kind of in the advanced stages. He's a wonderful, delightful man, and he's a seriously good horse trainer, or at least he was when he was you know, able to get around. And he had this $800 hat, and he I was over at his home the other day, and he, he made he, he made me walk out the door with this hat. And I said, I, I need to pay you for this hat or something because it's an old feral and it's, you know, it's got all, all the 10, 12, 15 beaver checks on it, whatever they do. But so, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. So, Steve, I'd like to talk a little bit about being a politician. Sometimes people, you know, uh, add, add a persona to that that's not all that attractive. But I've, I've followed your career as mayor in Poway uh, pretty closely, and you've done some really remarkable things in that city that are really what I consider to be the personification of giving back. Because it's not like you make a lot of money being mayor. Um, maybe, maybe nothing, you know, <laughs> but, but uh, maybe you can highlight some of those great accomplishments. Well, I think generally the way people view politicians or elected officials is pretty accurate. Uh, there are a lot of people in this business uh, for the wrong reasons. Uh, but it, too often, I think folks forget that they are elected to be public servants. Uh, and, and they focus on the public part. Um, I don't need that. I, I ran for mayor, ran for city council so I could focus on the servant part. So for me, it's always about serving the people. And that mean everybody agrees with me all the time. I've got my detractors, as every elected official does. But I think, by and large, uh, I've done things for the community that have been helpful and uplifting, whether it was uh, in the wake of the uh, Chabad tragedy that we had uh, a few years ago. Uh, a critical time to bring the community together, and I think we did a good job of that. Uh, uh, year or so before that when school shootings were such a problem uh, not around here but elsewhere uh, i in conjunction with uh, sheriff gore created a uh, school safety tip line uh, for poway high school so that people could call in anonymously and uh, draw attention to concerns that they had and it's been very effective uh, there's no question in my mind that it has uh, saved bloodshed uh, Another thing I'm proud of during the pandemic, we had restaurants that were just desperate to find a way to survive. And I was running by the park one day and I thought, you know, we've got all these picnic tables. And we gathered together over 100 picnic tables and loaned them to the restaurants so they could continue operating outdoors. And we changed wow. our municipal code uh, to allow them to use uh, parking spaces in the street and in the parking lot. So, wow. We, we look for ways to truly serve the people, and, and I'm proud of what we've accomplished. I even looked at your concept on the tip line for our human trafficking awareness training, and uh, it didn't work out, not because your idea wasn't uh, you know, very 
impactful and I, I understand it's worked really well. Uh, but yeah, those, those are great things, you know, and so often, like, like you said, I mean, I've met, uh, a lot of politicians in my life and most of the time I try and wear my flak vest when yeah. I'm around them because, you know, <laughs> there's an agenda there that they're not going to immediately reveal. But in, in my following of your career, I've noted that you're probably one of the most transparent, uh, plainly spoken politicians in the county, and you should be commended for that. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Now, I, I know that um, you ran for County Board of Supervisor slot, and that was a pretty hot uh, election cycle. I know you, you put your heart and your soul into it. You have plans to to go take a run at that uh, again? No, I'm gonna I'm up for re-election as mayor in Poway <laughs> next year. Uh, I I am blessed uh, to be able to be mayor of a community like Poway. Uh, we're known as the city in the country. Uh, you know, there's a, a special relationship between a mayor and a mayor's constituents. Uh, I I tried doggone hard uh, to get elected supervisor. Uh, the competitor in me hated losing and especially hated losing by nine one hundredths of one percent. And I was not uh, fond of the way my opponent ran his campaign and some of the trash that he put out that was just so far from the truth. It was ridiculous. But as we've sat back and looked at it since then, uh, it's uh, I think it was Garth Brooks had a song. Uh, Thank God for unanswered prayers. Uh, <laughs> that's the way I feel. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I've, I haven't run for political office in my life, but I've run in the sense of uh, attempted to get positions in my life where I, I felt I was uh, demeaned or uh, undermined unnecessarily or you know, uh, willfully. And uh, that, that never feels good, but uh, there's usually a reason um, that, that those things happen or that person gets the slot that you know, you were after, or I was after, and I, I, I take those opportunities to grow for that. And, uh, you know, I, I understand that uh, it's a painful process, but I, I applaud you for getting back in the fight and re, 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 uh, running for mayor of Poway. I mean, this is, you've done such an extraordinary job there. I mean, you really are sort of the benchmark mark throughout the county in terms of, you know, what you've accomplished and, Sure, the demographics are good. You know, it's a city that's got some wealth in it. Uh, but in spite of that, you've you've done things that are really um, meaningful. Well, I think the, the most important thing to me, uh, I think our most critical job is keeping our community safe. And I am proud of the fact that every single year that I've been mayor, we've been the safest city in the county year after year after year, because we stand behind our law enforcement. I'm in touch with our, our troops all the time, making sure they've got what they need, making sure they know they can reach out to me anytime. Uh, it's just a, a sacred responsibility to keep the community safe. And so I take it seriously. So maybe you can tell us some of the things that you do that <clears throat> perhaps uh, other municipalities are not doing uh, that make a difference. You know, I think more than anything else, it's making sure that your first responders, your sheriff's deputies, in, in our case, uh, know that you've got their back. We've been through a couple of years here where I think anybody in the law enforcement business has to be looking over their shoulder, wondering, you know, who's coming after them. We've never wavered in our support for law enforcement, and, <clears throat> and they've they've done us well. We go above and beyond uh, the call of the a contract that we have with the sheriff's department. If our local guys have a need, we find a way to fill it. That's, that's really exemplary. Uh, and it's, let, of, let me mention one other thing that it is too. I mean, I, I remember clearly we had a guy, uh, one of our sheriff's deputies a few years ago uh, who got roughed up in a fight uh, during an, an arrest and he was in the hospital and, and under home care for a while. He was shocked when I called him to check up on him. I don't think most people take the time to do that. And I'm not saying I'm special for doing it, but it's the little things that you can do uh, to to let your guys know, guys and gals know, 
that you're there with them and you feel their pain and, and you're going to be there with them throughout the whole process. Well, that's exemplary. Uh, we have a similar little story at the Harbor Police, uh, Port of San Diego Harbor Police, where during the pandemic and, of course, with the civil unrest that was occurring during the elections, a lot of the officers were fearful to go into establishments to even get a cup of coffee or take a break on their shift, especially those, you know, evening and late night shifts where things, things are, you know, a lot more actions occurring. Uh, and so one of the things we did at the San Diego Heart Police Foundation is we installed, well, we, we renovated a whole room into what we call a collision space. And that's uh, in corporate world, that's a place where everyone in the business or the company at some time or another, they pass through this space throughout the day. So we call that a collision space. So it's really a critical thing to have in a company or a police department or a city hall. And so we renovated this space that was the collision spot, upgraded the furniture and polished the floors and painted it out. But the most important thing that we did, and this goes back to exactly what you're saying, Steve, is the little things, is we installed this really high-end uh, coffee machine. I mean, it's, you know, it, you can get a caramel macchiato, you can get a latte, you can get a hot chocolate. I mean, it, and it's... I'm not a coffee drinker, but I'm told it's really good stuff. Well, the, the morale booster that just having the officers have that ability to before or after their shift, you know, get a really nice cup of coffee has, has boosted the morale in that department uh, exponentially. I mean, that, there, there's literally a line out the door on shift change. And, you know, these, and, but it's just, like you said, it's that little teeny thing. You know, I, I said, well, what can we do to make these officers feel a little bit better about themselves and feel safe? And there it is, a cup of coffee. I mean, yeah. go figure. Yeah, I, I make a point of, you know, when we've got somebody, a deputy retiring or somebody new coming on, I'll take the time to go from City Hall over to the sheriff's station and, and say hello or say goodbye. Uh, you know, it is uh, the little things that uh, I think demonstrate as powerfully as anything when you've got their back. So that didn't just pop into your psyche. So there must have been some something in where you grew up or something your parents taught you. To, tell, tell me how, how you evolved into this caring, giving person. Oh, golly. You know, my, my dad... Uh, had an interesting background. He, he's been gone for uh, 24 years now. Uh, but uh, long story short, my dad was a gangster. Uh, worked <laughs> with a guy by the name of Mickey Cohen in Los Angeles. He's He invented wiretapping. There was a movie made about his life. Uh, but he turned his life around uh, at an early Billy Graham crusade meeting in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and dedicated his life to, to helping folks who were less fortunate, helping kids that were uh, on their way uh, down the wrong path. And uh, my dad instilled a belief in, in all of us that anything was possible. Uh, the one thing I remember him saying time and time again was, you know, consider the turtle. He never gets anywhere till his neck is out. And so <laughs> I've always been a go for it kind of person. And my mom on the other side, she was steadfast with my dad when he was a bad guy. And uh, of course, when he was a good guy, she was the glue that held the family together. And she had the biggest heart and uh, the biggest set of angel wings that she kept hidden. But uh, it all comes from mom and dad. And, you know, if I can inspire our kids uh, anywhere near the way my parents inspired me, then, then I've done plenty. Well, the little that I do know about your family, you, you and uh, Corey are doing a great job of that, so you should uh, be thankful. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you are. So you must have some great stories about Mickey Cohen and your dad <laughs> that he, he passed on over the years. So one of those stories pop out as, like, prominent? Well, it, my dad was a, a good kid, a preacher's kid. His, his dad was a preacher. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a preacher's kid gone bad. He'd, uh, he'd been arrested for armed robbery right after high school. Uh, he got kicked out of the military uh, for for selling things that belonged to Uncle Sam. <laughs> uh, 
but then he kind of straightened out his life. But he was then approached by Mickey Cohen. He had an electronic shop. And Mickey Cohen said, you know, I understand you planted a bug for LAPD in my house. And my dad was honestly able to honestly say, no, I, I didn't do it. You know, I, I do work with LAPD and I work with the FBI, but I didn't do your house. <laughs> and Mickey pulled out a roll of $100 bills and said, well, maybe you could find it. And... Yeah. Dad said, no, I, I put them in. I don't take them out. And enough $100 bills rolled off that roll that my dad changed the business he was in and headed down a tough stretch. Wow. What a story. Yeah. I, you know, all of our families, uh, if, you, if you go back just far enough, you'll, you'll find something. My grandfather was a bootlegger in San Francisco during Prohibition. And uh, my mom used to tell the stories on Thursday night when the chief of police would show up and go into the parlor and money would change hands, you know, so that my grandfather could go out and, you know, run liquor throughout the city uh, with a, with a free hand. So, so th those are great stories. Uh, and he was a great guy too. And I'm sure your dad was a wonderful person. Uh, he was. Especially once, once he, he saw the light, you know, that he was heading down the wrong path. Well, that, that's outstanding. Well, this show is sponsored by the San Diego Harbor Police Foundation. Uh, we're a newly organized uh, nonprofit, just a little over two years old. And, you know, the, the whole point of doing the, the greater good, like I said at the front end of this, this podcast, was to kind of highlight uh, people, individuals who, in my estimation, and it's I get to pick, so it's kind of fun, um, Although when I when I talked to your wife, I said, "Do you think I should put Steve on the show?" And she said, "No, definitely not." <laughs> and I said, Wouldn't surprise me. I know, right? I said, "That's not fair." I'm going to invite him anyway. So, <laughs> so here you are. But yeah, the the real objective was to just kind of bring a highlight, put a spotlight on on the people about who they are. You know, I I, I don't want to talk about politicians or politics or you know the the things that uh, that bring us down. I'm much more interested in elevating those individuals like yourself, who, for basically no money, go out and and run a, a city, Poway City, which uh, I forget the population, but it's how much is it now? Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand people. So that's a big responsibility, you know, big budget, a lot of things to take care of there, and and uh, people like yourself, they do that. Uh, just because it's the right thing to do. So you really personify the greater good in my mind. So um, why, don't you tell, why don't you tell us uh, uh, just briefly uh, in your musical career, uh, what's, the, what's the best gig you ever had? <laughs> oh boy, that's a tough one. You know, I, I do my big Christmas show annually that uh, raises money for Rady Children's Hospital. We've been doing it for... Uh, this will be the 32nd year. Uh, it's called Carols by Candlelight. That's always a, a thrill. But I, I guess the one I remember more than anything else, uh, when I was living on the East Coast, uh, early in my career, I got to uh, be part of a big concert in uh, Central Park in uh, New York City. And mm -hmm. there had to be, you know, 15,000, 20,000 people there. Oh, my gosh. That, that was a pretty heady experience but I, i've been blessed i've gotten to do a lot of great things and it's tough to pick one out of the bunch one of one of the things my my parents and my grandparents always said that the harder you work the luckier you get so um yes you've been blessed and you have some you know creative talent and whatnot but that didn't come by just sitting around and not learning how to play the guitar and not learning how to you know, write a song and let your creative juices flow. Uh, so again, I congratulate you for all your successes. And uh, I look forward to seeing more of you. I understand on Sunday, is it? I think uh, uh, you got a big horse deal going on with San Diego Humane <laughs> Society. Uh, I, I heard heard a rumor that uh, Corey Voss has rounded up chickens and cows and goats and horses and we're going to get out there and show the public uh, what the Humane Society does in order to protect our citizens during these wildfires and other incidences that, that need their help. So it's been just a real pleasure to actually get to know you a little bit more, Steve. 
Uh, like I said, I've been looking forward to this show for a couple of weeks now. So thank you very much for making time for us today. Thank you, Jeff. It's good to connect, and uh, we'll hope to see you somewhere down the trail real soon. Absolutely. Take care. Take care.